welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. Waste Some Time Wednesday brought to you by Golden Robots Records. Uh, Golden Robot Records, sorry. I was looking at myself on the TV, which is always a mistake because I feel like I look like the uh, Frankenstein monster. Uh, but anyway, we're, we're, I, listen, we're, we're getting some stuff together. But this is a, a big day in the history of this show. And uh, uh, we're going to make some we're going to make some history. Uh, so I recommend that if you're a musician or you know a musician or if you're in a band or you know somebody in a band, uh, that, uh, you stay tuned because, uh, listen, today it's going to be like Oprah. Now, I want to make sure everyone can hear me OK. I mean, listen, we're still working on the, the laptop fund. You can feel free to support Uh because I'm using all kinds of gear here, just trying to get by. It was like uh, MacGyver today. Now, I haven't reached 10,000 subscribers yet, but the good folks at Golden, Robots, uh, Golden Robot Records, they have put together a promotion to commemorate getting to 10,000. And uh, I think, again, this is something that uh, is going to be an amazing uh, thing for a lot of actual musicians and, and one of the things about this show is bringing exposure to uh, to musicians. Uh, and so uh, hopefully in just a little bit, Mark Alexander Erber will be with us. He is the president and CEO of Golden Robot Records. And he can cause a little, uh, bring a little attention to this promotion that we're working on. As of today, I think I'm at 9,300 and something. So we got to get to 10,000. I know we're close um and we've done that in record time and that's because uh i've got the greatest audience you guys are the reason um that we're here we could talk a little bit about rock news as well we could talk about things that are going on we could talk about interviews I interviewed uh, a woman this morning named bridget west she played in a band called new york loose this was a sort of 90s band but she told amazing stories she dated dd ramon and dd ramon uh, was going to kill himself if she didn't come home and, and I think marry him. And uh, uh, Deborah Harry and Chris Stein had to intervene. Uh, it's all in the interview. It's an insane story. Um, she was just a young girl at the time. And uh, and then she played in the band New York Loose. Danny Nordahl, who's in the current uh, Faster Pussycat, uh, uh, he was in that band as well. And she says that uh, not much has changed from his days of falling down stage but anyway she's she and then also madonna almost signing them to maverick records and coming to see her uh, a lot of great stories sometimes on this show it's not a matter of who is the most famous person it's who has a story and i like to hear uh, a good story and i really enjoyed uh, this chat with her and that'll be out soon i also just recently interviewed lloyd kaufman of trauma uh, he is the creator of the Toxic Avenger, a company that I worked at, and uh, and uh, it was a great interview. We talked about the upcoming Toxic Avenger reboot movie, and so that interview is coming soon, too. To my Patreons who have been so patient with this channel and supportive since the beginning, we've got a lot of cool things coming up for you, a lot of things before anybody else. If you haven't signed up for the Patreon, um, that link will be added into the description after the show. Uh, I see a hello from Connecticut. I will be in Connecticut uh, next week at the Mohican Sun. So if you're in the area, come see Quiet Riot, Slaughter, and Stephen Piercy. This Friday, I'm at the Whiskey with uh, Stephen Piercy. And it's that's what I've been doing all day, uh, tour managing, working, dancing, uh, getting ready to go out and do... Um, uh, maybe less exciting. I'd rather sit here and talk to uh, you you guys all day. Sioux Falls, we had a lot of people. i love to see where everyone's watching from. Um, it's great that the show, uh, this YouTube thing, uh, this internet, I think this internet thing's going to last. You know, I think people, uh, people like it. And I'm glad we've got a little, uh, we got a little community here. So, the Sponsors of Rock Cruise, I guess, is, is setting sail today on a three-hour tour. Uh, and I guess as of today, Tom Kiefer uh, is not making it. 
And uh, uh, I heard a rumor that Slaughter is not going to make it. And uh, uh, LA Guns uh, uh, not going to make it. And then, you know, I think you go on these cruises because you like what's called uh, hair rock, hair bands. And they add things like Buck Cherry, not a hair band. And then they add uh, a Lit, not a hair band. You know, not, not that kind of music. And I feel like um, I feel like sometimes that might be a little, uh, uh, maybe a little bit of a disappointment to, to some of the fans. Uh, listen, it's a crazy time. Uh, I would love to... Uh, I would love to uh, have be asked to do these things. I see they get these guys, and this is a host, and that's a host. I never heard of any of these people. You guys know these characters? I don't know them. But uh, maybe after ten thousand subscribers, they will be calling uh, uh, me. I, yeah, is Leatherwolf going to make it? I don't know. Leatherwolf's supposed to come on the show. I think tomorrow will be a very interesting day. Uh, thank you, Steve, all the way from Columbia. I think it'll be an interesting day to see who actually makes the cruise. Finland, nice. I hope you watched my interview with uh, Sammy Yaffa. We talked about Finland. We're, I see a lot of people joining, and I know a lot of people want to hear the big uh, announcement. Yes, uh, that's true. Buck Cherry has Billy Rowe from Jet Boy in the band. Uh, I think they should have me host M3. And you know what? I think they should have me host M4 and M5 as well. But uh, I guess you have to have these ridiculous numbers. You know, you got to be Eddie Trunk. Uh, but listen, I would be happy to do all of these things. I won't talk about myself the whole time. Uh, that's what I have this for. And uh, uh, and who knows? My eyesight is so uh, uh, bad. I apologize. Uh, yes, Ron Keel has a label. I don't know what that means. Hmm. I wish him luck. He's a nice guy. Boy, the lighting in here is terrible. I apologize for how bad the lighting is. Um, I should be sh I, I should be sh highlighting your comments. You know, I forget to do that. All right. Nick is watching in Boston. Steve is in Columbia. Lane is in Jackson, Mississippi. This is one that I don't want to pronounce. It's... Uh, uh, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. That was Jason. Cool name. Uh, Tony is watching from Newport, Ritchie, Florida. Crawling Wind is in Milwaukee. I think it's Milwaukee, Oregon. I have not been there. Um, San, San Diego. I was there on New Year's Eve. I don't uh, know when the next time I'll be back. Pat watching Sioux Falls. And uh, Connecticut. Okay, so uh, I'm happy to see everybody here and being part of the show. Okay, hold on. And here is Jazz. Now, Jazz, Jazz, I was just saying today, you you are a hard worker because Jazz uh, works for Golden Robot Records, and she is helping to put this stuff together. And by helping, I mean she's doing the work. I read what she uh, tells me to. Um, and so, anyway, Mark will be on in just a little bit um, to talk about this big promotion i want to point out the golden robot records has a bunch of new releases and uh and you can go and uh check these out on their website and some of them are really cool and some of these people are guests that you will be seeing on the show uh very soon and so and, and some of these things i haven't actually listened to yet but i want to and it, there's a new release it's from eric turner of the band warrant and I guess Eric Turner's got a little bit of a uh, he's got a little bit of a punk band going on, and it's a ridiculously named band. So give me one second because I don't want to say it wrong. They'll take away my monetization. Uh, Dick Von Rock, Dick Von Rock. It's supposed to have a punk rock. -ish. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to talk about it next week. It came out today, Golden Robot Records, and I'm sure you can find it wherever music's available. A little side project from Eric Turner. Of warrant and I dropped him a message to uh, let him know that uh, it's time to come on the show and talk about Dick Von Rock. Anyway, um, uh, and anyway, and so uh, that is one of the the new releases. We also talked about um, last week. We talked a little bit about um, 
Ghosts of Sunset. I wanted to make sure I said it right. And they have a brand new record also that came out this week called Queen of Used to Be. And Johnny Monaco, who you all know from Enough's Enough, but may also know from this show, he uh, he played on that. He played a, a, a guitar solo on that album. It's also good uh, rock and roll music that I recommend you check out. Uh, Nick is recommending a band, a band called The Viagra Boy. And they're from Sweden. And I would check that out. Uh, thoughts on Tracy Gunn's band, Killing Machine. Uh, I don't know how much it's a real band, but he had a solo record called Killing Machine. When it came out, I enjoyed it. I can say that much. Um, oh, now listen. We can pussyfoot around all day and all night. We'll talk some more. But I want to get to this announcement. This is what you guys tuned in to see. And so I don't screw it up all the way from Australia. Now, I, I want to point out in Australia, it's Thursday. It's Wednesday here in the United States. So he's already seen the future. He knows what, what's ahead. And so what better uh, person to have on the show than the CEO of Golden Robot Records, Mark Alexander Erber. How are you, Mark? Buddy. Good. Look at look how great this connection is today. It's good to know. Yeah, because I used the right browser. I used the wrong browser last time. I better not jinx us. We need this promotion to be successful. Do you see how bad my lighting is? And I'm using like a, a laptop that has two uh, mice running in a, a wheel to, to power. So I have no I have no doubt. <laughs> so we're gonna what but Mark, this is really exciting. And uh, I, I'm so proud to be involved with Golden Robot Records. Uh, I, I've liked what you did even before we spoke. I'm a fan of the music you put out. I'm a fan of the way that you market your music. I think the most important thing, I tell artists all the time, um, an artist and a business person are sometimes different things. It's very rare that you find somebody who merges those qualities. And so when you're part of the Golden Robot family, you you're, you're getting that help to push things um i yeah. get the press releases every day it's good you want to know that the, your label's on it look i think i think um look there's a big difference between us and other labels you know we've got 12 labels now under our brand and over 400 bands and i think the difference between us and anybody else is we think differently we think very entrepreneurially i mean i'm involved in you know, I'll give you an example. We've got great distribution, but I'm still not happy with it. We're doing our own distribution from April where we are complete control with what we're doing for all our bands, physical and digital. I've got a sports and entertainment division where I'm hooked in with UFC fighters that promote our music, play it on their video, over their videos. Um, as they're walking into the octagon, they're playing a new single. So no labels are pushing it like that. I've got a million examples. You know, getting involved with you, sponsoring a segment on your show, um, to talk to your fans and talk to your public is so important because it promotes not only Golden Robot, but then when you look at Golden Robot, you go, oh, I'll go and have a look. Oh, Filter, LA Guns, um, uh, you know, members of Guns N' Roses and all the way down to a punk band in the UK. And, you know, we've built up a really cool roster. I've got bands from Israel to Italy, from Australia to South America to South Africa to Mexico. We've got rock and roll everywhere and it's a big, big rock and roll family. So it's exciting and I love what I do. So, you know, I, I like that Golden Shower Records. Yeah, well, you know, maybe that's a video for another time, that one. Golden Shower that's Records. Cool. That could be a, a – he, he's watching from Colombia. You have to forgive him. But that's yeah. a, a, that, that would be good for a, a different well, division. I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd say to Steve, don't threaten me with a good time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, is Jazz – Jazz is going to join us, right? Well, yeah, let's bring Jazz on because she's behind the scenes. We've got a, a big staff, but she's behind the scenes and um, she'll be the one sort of coordinating the back of what we're about to really announce. Yes, and she looks better than you and I. I don't know if you can <laughs> say that anymore. Maybe that's, not, maybe that's not politically correct. 100%. Um, I just thought I'd um, chuck something a little nicer on than my normal hoodie. Um, I think you've got makeup on, Jazz. Yeah, I know. It's rare that I do that as well. <laughs> and you know what? This is good for your audience to see a very natural Aussie girl. There's no one more Aussie than girl and, and a muso as well. She comes from a very cool rock and roll family. Let me tell you the story. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll digress for two seconds. Her father is in a great band called Cicada Stone on the label. 
We're signing her brother. She's a muso. I mean, it's as I said, we're, we're there's a real rock and roll family. It's a real rock and roll family. How cool! Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah, well, you're definitely keeping it in the family for sure. Oh um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah. well, so you, go yeah. ahead, Mark. Are you, have you announced? Have you told everyone what's going on? So we haven't said really anything. We've kind of teased that if you're a musician, you should tune in. And if you have friends who are in a band, you should get ready to tell them about this. And so um, I want to point out that um, we were discussing doing something, having Gold, Golden Robot Records sponsor uh, something on the show that would commemorate me reaching 10,000 uh, views, uh, subscribers. We're almost at a million views. And so we're at 9,300 and change, and we're getting there. We're getting close to 10,000. People are watching, subscribing right now as we speak. And uh, I, I said, what kind of ideas do you guys have? And you came up with, this is your, you're the brains of, of Golden Robot, a really cool promotion. I like that this show gives back to musicians. And yeah. when I started, I wasn't so sure that that was the direction we were going. I was having my friends on, and we interviewed them. But then yeah. I realized these people had product to sell. And some of them really, it's not getting hurt. Absolutely. And the thing is this, this thing is really simple. This is a hard business. This costs a lot of money. I mean, the millions of dollars that have been spent on our side is outrageous. But where you, where I get, look, to me, if people start to know me by being on with you and other things that I've done, everything starts and ends with Led Zeppelin for me. I'm the biggest Zeppelin fan ever. I love Zeppelin. So to be in this position of owning this awesome um, entertainment group and to be able to support the bands we do I feel very honoured so as you're going through this you need you need a few things by your side and a couple of them are here right number one you need the tension headache tablets all the time right mm. in this business and then secondly you need the Tums right so once you understand and you use these on a daily basis for the headaches and the migraines and the stomach aches that this business brings you once you can get by that we should be sponsored by them, by the way. Um, yeah. Certainly with the amount I take. Um, you need to make sure that you're on this level playing field where you work with some great people. And I've aligned the company, as I said, you know, the UFC stars and all these different things we prom uh, promote and sponsor one thing. But in the industry, there's a few people that are really at grassroots making a difference. And there was absolutely no doubt that you are one of them. So for us to be involved with you is a real pleasure and an honour and a privilege. And I 100% know you'll get to 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 um, subscribers because what you do is authentic and genuine and real, which is exactly what we do. So yeah, the thank fact you. That we, pleasure. The fact that we can cross this together, I think is fantastic. So to commemorate that and to give something back, I said, you know what? Why don't we give out a deal to one of your? You obviously got lots of artists and bands and um, musicians watching this because you're knowledgeable and you get knowledge from you. Let's give them a deal. Let's start a competition um, where one of your viewers can put in, can send in a uh, uh, a demo, and we'll explain how we'll do that in the coming weeks. They'll send a demo in. We'll have a series of people that um, we will work on together. Uh, that will listen to these demos and you could win a record deal. It's as simple as that. We'll put a couple of singles it, it, out. We're like Oprah giving away cars, but no. uh, it, it, it's uh, we're giving away a, a record deal. And and so what, what Mark is saying is that someone who's viewing the show is going to be able, there's going to be a website and you're going to be yeah. able to upload a song. It's really easy. Upload a couple of pictures of your band and then, there, we, we're going to narrow it down, and we have a panel. And in, uh, in the upcoming weeks, we are going to announce. By the way, Jazz, I'm just basing this on everything you sent me. I, I'm acting like I thought it up, um, <laughs> but uh, and so so anyway, we're going to have a, a, a panel of celebrity judges and industry people. I was trying to find people who are producers, who are A and R people, who know what goes into marketing a band, and so they'll be able to submit their music. They will get a single deal. With Golden Robot, you guys are going to put some money behind it and some promo and some push. The the winners are going to come on the show. They're going yes. to get in, an interview with us. We're going to play the music from the ten finalists and then hear live on the show 
we will announce th- who the winner is. Um, and Mark, you you told me that if the record, if the single does well, yeah. there is the chance at another single. And if that does well, chance at a record, a full album. 100%. 100%. Look, part of our, our um, vibe with the labels is, yes, you've got bands like Jefferson Starship, Vanilla Fudge, Filter, et cetera, um, that sell albums, no doubt. But we've also got this really good mix of bands that could be the next big thing, and then we support young and up-and-coming bands in the UK, in America, in Australia, et cetera, et cetera. And that's an investment. So I look at this the same way. If we find a, a, a demo that we're happy with and we put it out and it works, the world is your oyster. But you only have to have a look at how was Oasis discovered, right place at the right time. How were a lot of these bands discovered, right place at the right time? This is a 2022 way to be discovered. It's just the same. And this is an opportunity. Being discovered is about opportunity. And I think this is a um, an incredible opportunity. One of your um, uh, body knowledge says, what genre is purely rock? No, we're open to everything. We own the best country label in Australia. We've got a, a metal label, Crusader Records. We've got a punk label, Riot Records. Golden Robot does the sort of classic rock, straight down the middle rock. Um, I own Yama Records with a great band called Hot Shell Ray, who's pop. So... We're open, man. I mean, don't don't let it be. Um, uh, don't let the tattoos and the bald head and the black hair long fool you. We're going. We're going all the way. Let's open it up. Well, let me tell you a little bit what I look for uh, in in a band uh, in this kind of situation. I like a song that has a hook. I like something. Don't bore us. Get to the chorus. I like something that is going to stay with me. I'm going to keep thinking about it. But I'm also not just looking for something that would appeal to me but something that I think would appeal to other people. Is your band marketable? It, 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 it's very difficult. You could have the best song in the world and absolutely nothing to market. And so it's a package. And like you said, if we hear a country song and I go, that's the song, you know, uh, then that's the song. If it's a rock song, if it's a rap song, whatever kind of music it is, if it offers something to people and it's a band that we go, this is a band that needs to be seen then I yeah. think that uh, that's my approach. It's not like uh, just because of the type of music that I play or the people I interview, that doesn't mean that that's the, the, the genre that will, will, will win this. I think at the end of the day, it's really simple. This is a give back to your audience for the support they've given you. And we're honoured and happy to be involved. And this could, who knows where this could go. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I think that... Uh, this is definitely something special. And, and you know, there's all these gimmicks out there. It's not a gimmick. Somebody no. really has a chance to walk away with a record deal and to get seen. And it's like You'll you said, it. in this day and age, American Idol and things like that are how people are becoming successful artists. It's very different. You still well, got to pay your dues. You know, you still yeah. got to have an audience and you got to make good music. I know you know there's a lot of bad music out there. There's a lot yeah. of people who will send you music. I shouldn't say bad, but maybe it's not marketable. And, uh, and also maybe it's just not correct. People, some people blow up your Facebook, uh, your Instagram. I'm sure you get it all day long. This yeah, is the chance that. to get it heard. One of the things I like about golden robot is that you listen to everything. This mm-hmm. is not like, uh, anyone who submits is going to get, um, get a fair chance to be heard. And you guys have a great A and R team over there as well. Yeah, and it's interesting you say that because um, uh, this company started very quickly. This company, st- I mean, I'm an entrepreneur and I've been involved in a lot of things, but this company started because of my son. He was on Australia's Got Talent, which is like um, America's Got Talent. He was a drummer. He's one of the best drummers in Australia. He's an incredible drummer. At age nine, he was on Australia's Got Talent and nearly won. When he was finished, I said, oh, I don't want this kid to be a novelty. Let's put him together with some great um, musos in Australia who are older, and let's make an album. And funnily enough, there it is. That's the album that Jagger, my son, made. And there it is, 0001. That was the first album we ever put out. Long story short, um, that's what we started the company with. Um, and that has led us to where we are, you know, six, seven years later, uh, where we are today. Now, Jagger, who's 19 now, now works for the company in our a and department. So he will be involved because he's young, he's an incredible muso, 
but he's got this incredible knowledge like jazz where we've got other people in the UK listening to our A&R who are a little bit older and wiser. So we've got this real mix between experienced youth, et cetera. So it's a very cool thing um, uh, to be involved with the A&R side. And that's our fastest growing department because we get so, we're get we getting something like 400 demos a week. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and and this is a little bit of a way to, to, to uh, streamline yourself ahead of the line. I mean, somebody is coming out of this thing uh, with a deal. Now, Jazz, um, uh, you correct me. I believe next week we are going to have the link live, right? Yeah, so next uh, Australian Thursday would be your Wednesday. Um, it will be the link will be live um, and everybody will be able to submit. And it's going to be crazy for the next couple of months because I bet we'll have thousands of submissions. Mm. But um I'm very excited. I think this is going to be a great way to find like um, up and coming bands who just don't have a chance to, um, you know, get out there and like don't have the the team behind them to really push their their work. Um, so yeah, like even the winner, like the winner, yeah, we'll give them a singles deal. But like I'm sure we'll come across many other bands that are amazing. And I think it's important to note this is not a gimmick. This is a real deal. You will. Um, uh, get a contract and um, you will, you know, this will be separate to the promotion. So you'll get a proper contract and, you know, uh, it'll, it'll be done properly. So I, I, I'm fully, so I'm fully, you know what I'm excited about? Ooh, what are we going to see and what are we going to hear? And, and um, you know, what are your listeners into? And um, this will spawn on into, into it, it, it's, its own thing, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. And we're also, you know, the top 10 will, We'll we'll send heaps of merch too because we've got heaps of hoodies and jumpers and golden robot. I'm wearing the black one today, but I oh, know it's that side. That's right. I'm opposite on this on when I'm looking at myself. Um, uh, you know, there's heaps of merch and giveaways. Um, Matt, I'll give you stacks of vinyls. Um, all the d- different things we do. So we'll make sure that the top ten are really, really well looked. Well, after. we're going to promote. You know, we're going to promote that top ten. And the the, the 10 finalists, we're going to play their music on the show. So the audience is watching as well. And they will find out watching, uh, you know, those 10 bands, they'll find out who the winner is. And it could be a solo artist as well, you know, anyone who has music. 100%. No, it's very exciting, man. It's very, very exciting. Very exciting. So, uh, again, I appreciate the... uh, support like I, I like I said we both said it's a grassroots kind of thing and so when I started this channel it grew very fast and I think what people liked about it was uh that I didn't uh, bullshit and that I I said it like it was and it was funny last week I had Johnny Monaco on and we talked a little crazy and I said oh my god golden robots gonna pull the sponsorship you know uh but I think that you understand that this show is a little bit, uh, you know, a, a little different than we call it like we see it. I watched a bit of your show last week and it was, it's fine. Listen, you do what you need to do. You got our full support and um, uh, the, the I don't think we would ever um, pull your sponsorship um, unless you started going completely mad. <laughs> That's <laughs> well. I think I think uh, that that that's any moment. I can also say, just for people watching, uh, I know a little bit of the inside stuff. And there is a lot of golden robot stuff that it's too early to talk about, but there is a lot of big things coming. I think this is a label on the rise for fans of my show who like the kind of music that we feature on here. You will be getting a lot of that, and I'm excited that in addition to that, we're going to see some young, uh, some young artists and some artists that maybe just didn't get a shot. There's. I interviewed this woman this morning named Bridget West. She had a band called New York Loose in New York in the 90s. They had bad management. They just had, they were on the Crow, uh, City of Angels soundtrack, though. They toured with Marilyn Manson, but, and it's a great album, but just yeah. couldn't, it just never happened. And there's so many artists like that who, who deserve uh, better than what they got. And now, yeah. because you can do it fast like this, um, you know, the audience is open and younger people and jazz, you know, jazz, you're 22, right? Yes. (laughs) I don't want to age you. Yeah. But, but, uh, but you discover music differently. We were talking a little bit about how you watch review videos and things like that. Your approach to finding music would be different than what me and Mark's approach would be. 
Um, yes and no. Like I obviously love going to a vinyl shop and collecting vinyls just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like Spotify is a really good way that I find new music, um, hitting up playlists. Um, and yeah, watching reviews um, from YouTubers on YouTube. That's kind of how I source like new music for myself and also working for this label too. Like I'll, I'll constantly find like an, a band that we may be signing and just really, really like their music and then I'll show my friends. So. Would you say that YouTube is the, the number one way people find music in your opinion? Um, I think it's definitely up there. Um, for me personally, it's probably not the number one thing I use, but I definitely know many, many people that use it as a primary thing to source new music. What do you think, Marcus? I hear a lot of people saying they get their music on YouTube. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that, you know, when we've talked about this before, in fact, you were talking about on the show the other day, people have a go at Spotify and iTunes and all the all the stuff that goes on. I just think it's a, it's a mix. <clears throat> it's a mix of everything. I mean, I'm an iTunes guy. I like Apple iTunes, um, but yeah, YouTube, Amazon, all the DSPs, the digital service platforms are, are good because, okay, you're not making as much, but it's getting out there. But as I've said to you before, I know that I, I do, I work with bands that have bought houses from Spotify streams. So it's absolutely possible. But I, I think at the end of the day, you know, there's so much music out there. You've got to have a way to sift through. I mean, I know when I'm, driving in the car um i like to listen up i'm like i always go back to 70s stuff i'm always funnily enough you know steely dan or, or doobie brothers or zeppelin or whatever i find it so comfortable it's like putting on an old pair of slippers for me I, I i always go back to that because i'm listening to so much stuff i was playing jagger my son the other day um who wants to come on and say hello to you and he's a good person to talk to about what he's looking for with a and r because if he's young oh. mind he's completely different to us um, uh, I, I played him six demos from, you know, Australian um, artists called Ella Fence, um, Key Lock, band out of Ireland, um, Cicada Stone out of Australia, a uh, band out of America, it filters new stuff, etc. And I played him six singles and they were so vastly different. And that was what was so exciting about it was because we're doing such different stuff. And that's why this competition is open to such a wide variety of music and genres. And I think that's what stops it from going stale because we're always um, uh, we're always getting into different things, which which I really like. Yeah, and so I want to make sure that people who are just tuning in understand that we're promoting it in, in, to commemorate 10,000 uh, subscribers to this channel. We're not there yet, but we're going to get there soon. We are going to offer a promotion through Golden Robot Records. Somebody is going to, uh, next week, we'll have a link that's live. You submit your music, you submit a picture of your band, a little bio info, and uh, it's going to go to Golden Robot Records. We're going to narrow it down to 10. We are going to have a really exciting panel of musicians, uh, uh, some you've seen on this show, and other people who are in the industry, and then some, but, and then um, the 10 bands will be, showcased here this is it's gonna open for two months right jazz two months two months yep so you and had two you know, months to get it together we could pivot as well you know we could pivot mm -hmm. at some point depending on what happens we could um maybe do a a seed a, 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 or we could do a cd we could do a digital um compilation um of jason green um golden robot uh, competition two thousand and twenty two. I love this. I mean, I mean, I mean hold on, hold on. I got the I got the other live stream playing in the background. Let me just. Yeah. yeah okay. So here we go. Here we go. This is Mark's um, son Jagger that he spoke about. Yeah. So that's what Jagger Jagger was of the reason we started the company up, and um, he now works with our London office to do the A and R. And Jagger, um, Jason was asking. You know, when we're looking at music, because you're so involved in all the music that we're doing, um, what you look for. And because this is part, this competition is really yeah. out to everybody and all different genres and sort of a little bit of an idea of what we look for when we, we want to sign a band. 100%. Uh, first off, I'd like to say, Jason, you look pretty handsome today. Um, oh, thank you. Great. I'm I and, feel like uh, I'm having a bad lighting day, but I'll take that compliment. No, no, no. You, you know, you're looking on top of the world, mate. But uh, I... Um, 
hundred hundred percent with a I mean a re, uh, I mean good thing about Golden Robot is that you know even though we do have a reputation and even in more ways than one it may be our forte that we are uh, more involved in the, a lot of the rock side of things we are vi- we have a wide variety of not only like so many different types of rock but we also dip our toes into so many different genres, you know, and uh, one of the labels that I started up uh, in the last two years, I actually, sorry, the end of last year coming on to this year, uh, my label counterclockwise, I'm I'm looking for more left of field artists that are ranging from everything to jazz fusion to electronic music. And uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, we're not just restricted to, you know, you have to be a rock musician, you have to be a rock artist to come on, send your, send your demo in, send your submission in, because that's what we're looking for. No, we're looking for anything. If it's good, it's good. If it's if it's a hit, it's a hit, you know. Yeah. Now, now I want you guys, me and Mark. We already, I think you already know what we listen to. But uh, uh, jazz and Jagger, uh, you guys tell me what's what's hot, what's out there that we should be listening to. Well, uh, you you want to go first, Jazz? No, it's all right. You got this. <laughs> well, you know, I. Uh, well, the thing is, is that you know, you, you're really asking the the wrong person. I'm going to be honest with you, Jason. I am the biggest music snob that you'll probably ever meet i i i you know it's a what is it what is it it's the 10th of february and i've listened counted to probably 47 albums in the last 10 days mm-hmm. and uh because i because i listen to everything i can never get enough music i've grown up with uh with my old man who was shine the light of you know the the classic rock side of things but then i had my mother on my other on the other hand um who would be you know filling my head with bands like The Cure and Morrissey, you know, bands that would make me feel and cry. And uh, I am, uh, and I'm kind of at this point now where I'm trying to listen to everything and anything. But like, if, if you're t- specifically talking about what's the biggest thing in the world right now, it's kind of hard to pinpoint because the world's in this weird state where I feel like everyone is hungry for something. And everyone's hungry for a little bit of change. It's like, I mean, have you seen that? I mean, you know what? I'll openly say that I do not like this band, that they, but there's this band named Main Skin that's from mm-hmm. Italy, I think. Or Mon- Monoskin. Now, Monoskin, Mon- is Monoskin? One of the hot- Monoskin is one, I speak Italian, obviously, is one of yeah. the hottest things. I will be honest, uh, I did not know who they were, but I luckily keep a younger uh, a, a friend base. And uh, I, I went to see a band that uh, you kids may know called the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and yes. Monoskin was open <laughs> for them. I go, this is insane. Now, they and they were just on Saturday Night Live here in America, which is a big deal. I'm not yeah, sure yeah. I completely get it, but they have a cover of a Frankie Valley song called Begging, which yeah. I like. And they have oh, this. Uh, that song's everywhere. Bisexual sort of thing to them, uh, yeah. But is but maybe the music isn't there. You've heard the record, right? I mean, you know, man, I I don't really like it, but you know, like <laughs> you know, I don't really get it. But it's like you know, it's it's interesting how a band like that. I mean, you can see uh, like another one of the biggest artists in the world is like a kid from our hometown, you know, Kid Leroy. You know, it's like you know that kid like he is one of the most listened to artists in the entire world. I think he's in the top ten. And I have close friends that went to, that were in the same class as him. And now he's in America, you know, hanging out with Justin Bieber. And then you've got an Italian rock band that is now headlining festivals like Coachella. So it's really interesting. I cannot pinpoint and tell you that there's a certain genre or there's a certain trend in what's popular at the moment because there's so there's there's just so many paths that are taking. I mean, in the last two years that was born from lockdown all the way out uh, all the way back in 2020 when COVID first started becoming a thing, there's a, there's a thing called hyper pop, which is really high, strong, hyper, really hyperactive. You know, it sounds like you're on a sugar high pop music that's tuned all the way up. That's fast. And that gets your heart pumping. And it's like, it's, it's super weird. It's super disjointed. And it sounds like that you're in some sort of, you're in some sort of dream. Uh, either a dream or a nightmare. You don't know which one it is, but that stuff is huge at the moment. I think uh, it sounds stressful. I, I, I think it's too. too oh, I love it. You know? Jagger, where are you? Um, I mean, I know the submissions for Golden Robot we're not talking about and they come to us, but where are you hearing and seeing all these new bands? Because Jason asked me before, is YouTube where you're picking them up? Where are you picking them up? Well, you know, my role with the a and I mean, as, uh, as the boss said, 
it's a, uh, you know, I, we get, we get heaps of demo submissions in a week that I have to shift through. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, and then my other job is to look for bands for all the labels, for all the 12 labels. So I'm not just looking for a specific band for the punk label. Like I'm just looking for punk bands. I'm looking for bands that are going to fit into any roster. And I actually, my main one is Bandcamp because uh, usually bands that are still unsigned are, are lingering on Bandcamp. And Bandcamp's huge. I'm very big on Bandcamp as in like I'm very involved in what's going on there because uh, a lot of the type of niche musical genres that I'm into when they're, when they're printing their stuff on vinyls and artists and labels that are specifically putting out those niche genres and artists to those niche genres, that's where I'm grabbing physical formats of uh, from Bandcamp. But if I'm probably spending sometimes up to three to four hours a day um, – looking for bands and Bandcamp's one uh, is a big one. Uh, Spotify is a, is another big one. I, uh, when, when you go to your discovery tab with the stuff that I listen to when the, and with all kind of like the more obscure bands and I'm listening to Spotify usually throws a lot of things at me, which I, which I can sometimes struck gold with. And I have struck gold with in the past finding bands for golden robot. They give me a band that has, you know, a few thousand monthly listeners and are unsigned uh, and YouTube is definitely one of them. And also just social media. If you like a, if you, if you're on Instagram, for example, and you're into a punk band that are unsigned, if you go to the recommended accounts to follow that are like theirs, they're going to show you the other local bands that are in their scene because they're going to, they're going to show because the stats add up to people that follow them. And it's usually people that are following these other bands in their scene that just pops up and, it's just a just a system. This is, this is good advice because the show has been an old folks' home until you guys got here. You know, <laughs> now we're learning something. Because my uh, Spotify discovery, I think the the, the dial broke in nineteen eighty five. You know, I need to, I need to hip, hip it up, hip it up a little know, bit. Now you know the method and the madness. So I've got um, Jagger, who's nineteen, that obviously is he's an, I mean, he doesn't talk about it much, but he's one of the best drummers in the world. He's an incredible drummer. I'm, a, I'm the best drummer in the world. I know he's the best drummer in the world. <laughs> I got the title yesterday that the CEO the CEO of drumming called me and he said, you're the best. <laughs> and yeah, so. But, but what, once you, you know, you've got this, you've got a young crew like Jagger, uh, Jazz, you've got Amy in the UK, myself. I listen to stuff that he doesn't listen to. Um, but what I'm the point I'm trying to make is, our arguments sometimes are over bands. I might love something and he can't stand it and Amy can't stand it and et cetera, et cetera. So we argue over bands and I think that's healthy and I think that's good. Once you find a band you like, what is the process of assignment these days? It, it's, it's, it's a really good question. The way we, way we try to do it is, look, I, I, have, I, I, I won't forget the question, but I'll tell you something. What has annoyed me about COVID has been the lack of touch and the lack of personal contact. You can't shake someone's hand. You can't give someone a hug. In Europe, you can't kiss anyone on the cheek, et cetera, et cetera. So what I've tried to bring back into my everyday life is personal touch. So what we like to try and do is when we find a band, let's say Jagger loves the band, Amy finds a band, the team finds a band, we agree, Jazz will reach out, she'll make first contact. We will set a Zoom up straight away. So we can talk to them and look at them in the face and look at them in the eyes. And what we're trying to do is establish, look, we're, we, we think we've got something to offer as a label, but we need to establish that they've got something to offer us back, not here you go, do your job. They've got to be involved in the process, pushing on socials, writing great music, playing live. They need to have that energy to get out there and push the band and be part of the process. So once we sign, once we do that, we probably do two Zooms with them, maybe three, and then we do emails back and forth. And then once we're comfortable, we'll put a um, a draft contract together, sign them, and then the work starts. The brainstorming starts. We spend a lot of time on Zooms. Brain. I was just on the line with Farewell to Fear, uh, a great band out of America. Actually, Mike should come on this show because you'd love Farewell to Fear. They're a fantastic band. Um, they uh we spent an hour with them today brainstorming and you know that that's what it's about you've got to be entrepreneurial when we're pushing things out there anyway i digress jagger i'm enjoying listening to you i think this is a good comment here here. Me? music look at that music. i just got some uh, appreciation from the old man can you believe it <laughs> <laughs> Take you know, it you know, wow 
Well, listen, listen, I'd like to hear you guys tell me. You know, I get the I get the list of what's coming out through Golden Robot. I recognize some of it, but I would like each of you to tell me one release on Golden Robot. Could be new, could be old, that I'm that maybe I'm missing. Right, well, let's start with you, Jagger. Ooh. You got to pick so, one. Uh, so, something that uh, I think that you'll like that you may have not that may have like gone past you. Yeah. Uh, some of the English stuff. What, what, what is something you know? My one of my favorite bands on the label. Who I I I mean I I when I started working, uh, I'm, I've only been officially working for the company for two years. I mean I've been unofficially working for the company for you know as long as it's been around because I've been sitting in all the fucking <laughs> meetings where I should have been probably learning math at school. But I um I school doesn't uh, mean anything. You you you, you oh, got no, real school doesn't mean shit. You know that's exactly why I, I did what I did with the with doing music because I just established you know what, this isn't going anywhere so it's either this or or, or nothing. But um I uh, one of my favorite bands. So when I started out three years ago, uh, the boss he said to me, "I will give you a cut every time you find a band and we can sign them." Uh, and I, and because, you know, I've been in, a, in my band, the kids in Australia, we've been around for like a, a near decade. We started the band when we were 13. And Here's a band that Jason would love, the kids, without promoting your own band. He'd love the kids. You've written some incredible I mean, music. I mean, listen, we're literally the best punk band that's out right now. Like, really, like, I want to hear it. Like, like, it's not, like, no bullshit. Like, you know, like you hear, like there are some unbelievable ba uh, punk bands uh, specifically from, from America at the moment, there's Wacko from from Long Beach. There's uh, Soul Glow from uh, I think they're from Philly. Like these amazing bands that are coming out in the Linda Lindas that are like making waves at the moment from Cali as well. Uh, but you know, the, my band, no one can touch us, man. And the thing is, the best thing about it, no one has heard of us, which is the best. I like I like the fact that we're just the best, and like no one has heard of us. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just fucking around, but no, I mean, listen, my, my band's one thing, but you know, I've been in the punk scene over here for a long time and I've built a big reputation up for myself and I'm very, very re respected in the punk scene. Oh, well, the kids, here. that's the first one I'm going to listen to. That sounds like, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. like uh, you, I mean, you're humble in the way you sell it, but I think that that sounds perfect for me. Well, yeah. I mean, listen, our stuff, we haven't released some stuff, uh, some material in a while and since the lockdown period has started uh because we're at an interesting point you know we're all we're all like adults now you know like we've been in the band ever since we were in school first growing hair on our balls we started the band so like you know we're kind of at a point now where we're growing out of it and we're just doing it for fun but uh, i'll send you some unreleased material as well like you'll like that but i will tell you a band that i signed years ago and i and i love them so much Still to this day, that I had to sign them on counterclockwise. The label that I've started out is a band called Two Mums. They are a band of four blokes, uh, four stinky blokes from uh, Batemans Bay, which is a um, a real, uh, which is a beached area. How would you explain it, uh, boss? Coastal, it's like a coastal town. It's a coastal town. Like it's in it's in the middle of nowhere, and it's all the way Don't out in Malibu. Don't think of Malibu. It's not. It's no, no. Of Malibu. Don't think it. Think of. Um, Think of Venice Beach, but worse. And um, and uh, they um, they um, they're in just this psych psych punk band. Like you listen to it, and it's super raw, but it's so aggressive, and it's so on your face, and it's so it's just it's so out there. Like they just don't give a fuck, and they're just here to do music, and they love it. But you know, piss people off, and I love it. I think you'd really dig their stuff. They release an EP. Uh, before the end of the year, and it's actually very, uh, very much about the the U.S. Army force. Uh, uh, the the EP is called Bushmaster, so it's a it's a really um really awesome EP. You should definitely check that out. Well, we we're, we should put some links in the description so that people can check these bands out that are being recommended. Because I know a lot of people are are looking for things. Uh, I, I, now, aside from the analogy of putting hair on our balls. This is where we should go to you, Jazz, because we we we, we got to class up the joint a little bit. Uh, um, uh, okay. You tell me. Um, okay, so on the label, I think a personal favorite of mine is probably a band on. They're on. Um, actually, let me just double check. They're on She Who Rocks, but I think they're also on Riot. Yeah, they are. Um, a band called Scabs, which is um, an all-female band from Australia. Uh, 
Oh, is there? Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, where are they from, Jack? Are they from Melbourne? Or yeah, they're from they're from, they're from Newtown. So they're from uh, they're from Sydney. From Sydney. Yeah, I think they're pretty awesome. They're pretty rocking. Um, I also really love a band that we haven't announced yet, so I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say anything. Oh, right, maybe Mom. not. What do they start with? Ah. Uh, yeah, you can you can talk. Okay. About it. Yeah. This is exclusive. Hold on. Let's let's uh, let's take a moment because exclusive we're getting a preview. Exclusive. Um, the band is Scoop. called. They called Roller. Um, R O L L A. Yeah, they're a UK band, and I really like them. I like that they're all they of their are. music. I think it's they're the really cool. Yeah, agreed. Um, yeah, and then obviously I got to have a little um, plug here for um, my dad's band, Cicada Stone. Um, I love his music too. I've grown up with it right from little. Um, and uh, yeah. I reckon those are probably my favorite bands on the label currently. I know that like there are many, many others, but I actually haven't had the opportunity to listen to all of them yet. So, um, as you can, as you know, there's over 400 artists on our labels. So yeah, we haven't had. So incredible, and you know, here in America, especially if you're from New York City, like myself, you believe that uh, Americans like to believe that it's just us. We like to believe that the world is America. And New Yorkers especially, we're the worst because we just believe that it's New York and that's it. New York is the world. And uh, But when you talk to people uh, you know, from a label based out of Australia that is an international label, these aren't just Australian artists, these are people from all over oh, yeah. the world, you realize how much good music there is. So now, whether Monoskin is the best thing or not, it is impressive that an Italian band can break through in America so big. Most of the record is an Italian. So... It's fun to see that maybe things are starting to open up. People are looking for music uh, in different areas, and I think you guys do that. Now, you also have some signature name bands that we've talked about, Filter, Hot Shell Ray, Riley's LA Guns. Uh, and, and, and there's always people who are going to ask every day, where's Blue Murder and, uh, you know, these the, the same things that we get. But uh, this is like – there's a family, obviously. You guys are family, and you can see that with the label that there's – and there's different things to check out. The thing that I like about it, but by the way, Jazz isn't my daughter. I'm not that old. <laughs> yes. Oh, did someone think that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Um, and it's Roller R O W L A. Um, I, I I like. You know what I like? I like it. Like we released a single this week from Dick Von Rock, who is Eric Turner from Warrant, right? So there's, there's the connection to Warrant. I've released plenty of things with Alex Grossi on it. Connection to right quite right we're doing jizzy pearl's new album quite right and everything else that he's done and he'll be and he'll be here next week and it's uh, i'll be seeing him on the road he and his record comes out in march correct 11th, 11th of march so and tony franklin's doing some uh doing an album for us at the moment so there's all these um uh different bands i was talking to michael thomas this week there's all these different bands and different artists um doing things for us um that uh, you know, there's a filter side project we're going to be doing. Michael DeBars does stuff with us. There's all these incredibly talented people that we're giving a home to to do one or ten projects, and I really love that. So we probably have all of Blue Murder, except for John, doing some stuff on the label, if that makes sense. If I ever put a super group together, it would be unbelievable. <laughs> well, and it seems like uh, it's heading that way. And like I said, you, you are always – open ear to new talent and obviously some older talent that needs a new home. Uh, and and uh, I think that as people stay tuned, they'll see that. But uh, this particular um, event that we're doing, I'm excited to be involved with you guys uh, to commemorate 10,000 subscribers to this channel. This was a little homegrown thing. You know, uh, it, it was the lockdown happened and I said, okay, well, I'll do this. I didn't do it. Uh, to get uh, monetized and, and and all these things. And as it happened, people enjoyed it. And I think they enjoyed what was real about the show. And people got to learn about artists that they didn't know. And they also got to learn about some of their favorite artists who came on here and were very candid. In one of these interviews, there's something where someone felt like they were talking to me like a friend and said something that maybe they haven't said before. And uh, I think that that's what made this channel special. And I was glad to have that connection with you. After I interviewed Steve Riley, 
because the mm. Steve Riley interview is a prime example. It was very detailed. It wasn't about mudslinging uh, in the LA Guns yeah. world, uh, although I do that occasionally. Uh, well, we have Paul Mars Black coming on next week, by the way, who is the original singer of LA Guns, wrote half the songs on the first album, just to show you how many millions of LA Guns <laughs> members there, there have been. But uh, so anyway, and we, and we started talking, and uh, it's nice to see that you got it, because I'll be honest, I had turned down uh, certain sponsors in the past because it didn't fit what I do, and you only have your reputation. So if I sit here and tell you that I drink a brand of coffee that I don't drink, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it doesn't work. And when I tell people that I heard a record and I like that record, they know that I'm not lying. Now, my opinion might be different than somebody else's, but we've been very authentic. And I know that you guys are very authentic with what you put out. So to commemorate 10,000 subscribers, we're getting there. Hopefully in the next couple of days, we will be giving away, Golden Robot Records will be giving away a record deal for a single. If your single does well, you'll get a second single. If your second deal uh, single does well, you have the chance at a full length record deal. Uh, Golden Robot works hard to place it on the division of their label that works best mm -hmm. and to get you out there and to promote it. And to be on this show, which is closing in on a million subscribers, to get your music heard and, and also heard by a panel of experts. And what's great is that you have young people, you got you know old people like uh, me, I won't speak for you, Mark, and, uh, and then a lot of talent who've heard music and also understand what it's like to be an artist who just couldn't get a break. A hundred percent. And that's how I found you. And that's how I've got... I don't know how many, 60, 70 people working for us around the world, working for us on contracts, et cetera. And they're all the same. They're all passionate about music. They're all very, very um, uh, keyed into what's going on. A couple of people are asking, where can you see some of our music? Obviously, go to our website. But if you go to Spotify, every time we release a single or an album or an EP, we put that on a Spotify playlist. There's actually a Golden Robot Records playlist, which has got nearly every song we've put out, which is really really cool um that you can go and listen to stuff there but no jason it's it, it's it's great it's great to be involved in this um i think this is just the beginning of things we're going to do together and um i think it's good to get on here and have these kind of discussions and um you know music is the best thing in the world music if you're feeling shit, can make you feel better uh, you know, uh, if you're hearing music you want to celebrate etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think what we do I mean, you know, we're not saving kids' lives here. We're not neurosurgeons. But I know for a fact, because I've got the emails and the letters, that we have changed people's lives with the music that we've put out because it's saved them from feeling shit and listen to something and they feel better. And I know that that music wouldn't have existed if we wouldn't have got involved. So, and you're the same. You're giving people an insight into something they might not necessarily have got to. So, you know, congratulations to you. And to um, and to your and to your listeners that they tune in and listen to you, it's it's just a cool thing, man. There's nothing negative about any of this. It's all positive. Yeah, I, I definitely should point out this is a very organic audience. The people have gotten to know each other here. I didn't expect to do the live show as often as I did. Uh, it's hard to keep because I'm on the road with Stephen Piercy from Rat. I'll be away for the next few weeks and so i record when i can and update when i can and the and i bring the audience with me and we we've all kind of been behind the scenes you know this is definitely not uh smoke and mirrors and again you guys have been so authentic with what you say and what you do about uh artists and how it goes and i think people like seeing it mark you've yeah. been on the show before we talked about how spotify is a valuable tool if you use it right how social media is a valuable tool but you have to know how to use it and there's so many artists uh um, who don't. I'm looking forward to all the things we have. We've got two months. So that means right now, if you're watching, you've got a band, you've got to get out there, pick your best song, put it on, band, solo artist, put it out, send it. The link comes out next week. So you got you got a week to get the link open and then a two two months. And, yeah. it, will, and it will be uh, judged. And uh, hold on, we got a, a, we got a, these are the people who pay the rent around here. Yeah, they say they're, they're saying uh, it's a it's a nice comment. Sounds like you don't screw the artists like the old days, and uh, that is true. A lot of artists have been through hell. Listen, I can tell you something. When we first started these labels up in the first couple of years, we were underfunded. We made mistakes and all that, but that was learning. You know, you got to fuel the jet before it takes off. 
And we, we learnt as we went going. But the one thing that I've always tried to do is look after the artists. The one thing, if we it, being being Australian and running an international company, um, we tend to just tell the truth and be transparent. So if we screw something up, we apologise and we fix it. If we do something well, we'll celebrate it with you. So I've tried to stick to that the whole way. And you know what? The one thing I like about us, you go and look up other labels and try to contact the CEO or try to contact anybody and you get that silly info at Golden, at whatever records. I try to make it that you can get to us. I try to make it that you can find us, you can call us, you can do whatever you need to do. Um, and, and, and I might, and I may every now and then get a lot of lunatics sending me a lot of really mysterious emails, but hey, it's worth it. I, apo I apologize, Jagger. I I'll start uh, sending him to Jazz instead. I knew, I knew it was you, Jason. Okay, <laughs> just me like, I Jagger, I gotta me tell like, you, you have you, you've got a great energy, you have the world's best punk band, I have the world's most mediocre punk band, and our <laughs> fans. Should go and, and 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 later this year it'll come out on your on the Golden Robot label, Sin City Rejects. I should yeah. play my own band, and we should tour. We'll go on before you because we're not. Right oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'd love I'd love to do that. You know the kids. Uh, the kids. Um, actually, I got it behind me. We did two dates. Uh, there's only one date there, but there's another move post. Your uh, move your screen up so they can yeah, see move, it. Move it up. There it is. Yeah. I just have it like this, and it's just my head. Yeah. So I have it like that. Yeah, it's um we uh, did a tour with them when we were years ago when we were first starting out and we did a recording over there and it In didn't go very well. But hey, it, it was still huh? That was at the whiskey. Yeah, but we play yeah, we play two nights at the whiskey. It's actually um it's a bit of a um uh a bit of a thing for me to boast about because one of the nights we opened for Christopher Mintz Plass's band. He's the actor who did Mick Lovin in Superbad. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, we had a we had a great time. We've been wanting to go back to the states. We had a lot of big tours planned to go over there and play with play with some great Cali punk bands. Um, but you know that was happening right when COVID started. So uh, everything got cancelled. Hundred percent though. Uh, yeah, we got a little time. Yeah. Sorry, we got a little Sorry, time with, with things, but I, hopefully things are going to be getting better. And then the mediocre and the best could be the tour that uh, everyone's been waiting for. We can we can we can. Com combine the mediocre and the best and leave it at the worst. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I, 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 I like that. Listen, I like I'm, excited. I'm excited to, 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 to get to my music out there with you guys. You got, you, you, you know, I'm old, so. <laughs> hey, hey, but remember, remember, you're looking good. Okay, that's all that matters. I mean, how old are you, though? <laughs> 70 years old. He looks great yeah. for 70. I look good for my age, right? Thank you. God, oh, my, God, my grandmother's 70. And she looks like she looks not even alive. I mean, like, you know, like you're doing well. Mick Jagger <laughs> is 78 years old. And yes. I watch him and I go, does he get out of bed and go, oh, like I do every day? But You know, you know how you can, you can say what was one of the best moments in your life? And I can tell you 100% that one of the best moments, you know, other than your kids being born and all the normal stuff, um, and the first time you bought a 1977 Pontiac Trans Am, um, other, than those, other than those days, the best moment of my life, I think it was May 6th, 2013, at the Staples Centre with Jagger. So it was, you were what, Jagger, 13? 13? But, but, do you think I'm 22? No, no, no. You've just, you've just chopped oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you've sorry, just sorry, sorry. three years ahead of my life. All right, anyway, however I was, old. I, I, would have been, I would have been 10. We were at the Staples Centre. We were backstage, the Stones gig, and through a couple of contacts, Jagger met Charlie Watts, and, um, and that started a relationship which was amazing, but we got to be behind the scenes in their dressing rooms, sitting there casually, Jagger meeting Charlie and meeting Keith, and then Mick Taylor was on that tour, which was, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. And being a Stones fan and meeting these guys, it was the most incredible, I could cry, it was the most incredible moment. And I had my son with me and I said to him in the hotel room before, I said, we will never, we were playing Wild Horses and I said, we will never get this opportunity again where I'm my age, you're your age, we're meeting the Stones. And then just as we were leaving, um, Charlie said, hey, I want you to meet Mick. 
and we went to a stairwell, not a dressing room, and he was running up and down. He was running up and down the stairwell in a tracksuit and came out and we've got a great the, the stairwell the stairwell uh entrance size was like gated shut like with a steel yeah like thick door like four inch thick door he, just he came out and met jagger um and uh it was just the most incredible moment ever it was unbelievable so you could pinpoint the best moments in your life that come back to music and my best uh to do with music it was was amazing jagger and jagger meeting yeah, yeah. incredible. That's yeah. definitely a highlight. It's actually funny because, like, that all happened when I was 10. And that's kind of like a moment that you build up your whole life for. So after that, there's just really nothing that's going to top it. So I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, satisfied. Like, I'm just happy now. Like, Hey, hey I'll blow you away, Jason, right? And then we're, we're going to get off because we're hijacking the show. But let me, t- let me, let me t- give you, right, you're going to love this. Guess who's played two nights on drums? With Tracy Guns at the whiskey. No, I knew this already. I didn't Jagger. know that. It's a funny. I'm cool, uh, Tracy. I'm cool LA Tracy. Guns is always in a strange uh, 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 parallel. Totally. Well, tra- look, this was bef- this was before a whole lot of things. But uh, uh, J- I've got to say, Tracy um, actually treated Jagger. Very- well, I don't know if you always know. Always did. Always did. Tracy's got a son called Jagger as well. I don't yeah. know if you mm-hmm. know that. But um, he treated Jagger very, very well, and I think he played with him twice on stage. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't even know. I, I'm a little young to remember how it happened. I remember that oh, day yeah. that I, oh, that's yeah. a, that's a day that I, I really remember because uh, we were driving and we went to Calabasas, and I met Chris Jenner, and then I, and then we got in a car accident, and then we, <laughs> and then Tracy Guns <laughs> texted me and said, "You have the same name as my son." Do you want to play Led Zeppelin with me at the whiskey tonight? So I just turned up to the whiskey, got on stage with him. We played rock and roll. And then I played another time. He invited me back He was because he was doing a birthday bash. And, uh, yeah, Tracy was was always, you know, great to me. He's a good guy. Right thing about Jack, and, right? then, um, and, then, uh, and then years later, he got my band, the best punk band in the world. He got my band. Uh, we, we toured with uh, LA Guns the last time they came out. Actually, no, not the last time. The second, uh, they, it was a few years ago. We toured with them around uh, around Australia, and uh, he was really funny the whole tour. He's a he's just a funny fucker. So you know, like yeah, yeah. you know, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. You should have called the band the, the best punk band ever. That, he does. Know, that, that oh, way, 100%, no. Because yeah. I'll tell you something, Jason. It's really funny because when I look at a scene like a punk scene. Because to me, punk is like about love, support, and unity. And in America, it's really about that. Because, you know, you guys really only have scenes in specific places, whether that be California or New York. It's not like you're going to go to, you know, somewhere really random, like a, a small town, and there's a, and there's like a punk scene everywhere because it's only in different places. So the people, like the punk, the punks will go to where the scene is. But in Australia... And, and they all share it together because that's what it's about, man. They all share it together because it's a it's a it's an art form. It's a it's not a dying art form, but it's an art form that is still alive and breathing. But is 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 loved by a certain amount of people, and they will all come together as one and share it. That's what fucking punk's about. But in Australia, and I will always openly talk about this. Every one of our states to Sydney, to Melbourne, to Perth, to Adelaide, to the most random fucking town. Sydney. They have these thriving punk scenes. But instead of all sharing it and being like, well, this is awesome because we've got a nationwide punk, you know, we've got a nationwide punk, you know, what's the word? I don't know, punk. Collective. Collective. There you go. That's the exact word I was trying to think of, collective. A nationwide punk collective, they, uh, everyone... Because, you know, everyone in Australia are very fucking jealous of each other and don't like it when somebody puts their head up and does something out of the box. They'll go, no, 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 no. We are very territorial. We don't want to We don't want to have anything to do with your bands. So Sydney bands don't like Melbourne bands. Perth bands don't like Adelaide bands. It's just an ongoing thing. And no one's in like – and no one wants to speak about real shit that's going to piss people off anymore. Everyone wants to, you know, try and get on radio and become a fucking, you know – stereotypical Aussie band that talks about stereotypical Aussie things like a gimmick act 
And that's the thing that we really suffer with. So when I say, so if a band like us comes along and we're young and, you know, we've been playing our instruments our whole life, so we're all right at our instruments and we're writing songs that are wanting to, that we, that resonate with ourselves and we know that people can resonate with it. Instead of going, damn, this is like, change, this is like something that, it, that Australia really lacks. They'll just go, oh, fuck them. Mm-hmm. You know, who cares? Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I don't, who cares about that? So I will say, I always say, oh, no, we're just the best because of it, it gets a rise out of people. So it's it's yeah. awesome. Well, that's part of what punk's about. First, I got to say, though, if, if there's actually an Australian band called Kangaroo, that's the greatest name ever. I think that it's a, I think that's Kangaroo. just a Kangaroo. Well, is that real? Say, like, someone, is that a band or should it be a band? Someone's I think it's someone being funny, but I love the name Kangaroo. You go to comments, Jagger, you'll see. And Steve has said, Gigi. Oh, look, look, people are writing Gigi Allen. Look, yeah. watch this. I got a tattoo of Gigi Allen, the one he had on his chest, live fast, die, Gigi. See, I if I had that. to sum up punk, the day that punk probably died is when he died. Oh. Le- uh, you know, legitimately. <laughs> like, you know, like it's like. Even though there's some things that you know we can look uh, that I can look at and be shocked at, even like even for my standards, I can look at and I'm shocked at because he was a wild motherfucking human being. He was the last rock and roll outlaw. He he was like the last walking and living example of like somebody that had nothing to lose and was just all in to his art. And can that's imagine, what I fucking love. Imagine Jason being a f- all right. So we've got this music group. And we deal with music every day. And obviously, I've got tattoos all over me. But can you imagine your 18-year-old son on his birthday saying, I want to get a tattoo? So you're faced with the dilemma of, okay, you, you, the, the only control I have over it is saying, you know what, buddy, I'll pay for it. So I've got some sort of control. And then he says, I want to get a G.G. Allen tattoo. So then you're trying to get that through your head. And not a little one. It's a big one on his, on his calf. So you're faced with this dilemma, mate, you know, you've got to look at that for the rest of your life. And then you're faced with the dilemma of where he puts it. So it was a very interesting, it was a very interesting, um, and we did on their 18th birthday on the night, we went and got it. When I was and, in high school. Yeah. When I was in high school, I went with my girlfriend at the time to get a tattoo. You know, she wasn't old enough. And in New York City, tattoos weren't legal for a lot of years. And we went to a place right around CBGB's. Might have been like on top of a. It was shady as all hell. Uh, I, I, I shocked that she didn't get some kind of a plague. Anyway, as we were entering, Gigi Allen was just leaving from getting his tattoo, and uh, and wow. that was the first time I'd ever heard that name. Um, wow. It wasn't long after in New York they have a thing called public access television where anyone could broadcast what they want, and they had video of Gigi's last concert where he's running up the street because they, they, they raid the place and he's leaving and ultimately yeah. he, he goes. They and got dies like four songs in and a riot broke out. It's completely some of the most insane stuff uh, yeah. ever. I had an interview with a guy named Steve Broy on my channel. Steve Broy is the original mentor. He's the last of the mentors. And this band yeah. is pretty in- insane, but they toured with Gigi Allen. So I did a show and someone asked me to learn a Gigi Allen song called Don't Talk to Me. I expected yeah. it to be really stupid, but um, his first he, album is amazing. Yeah, before he was completely strung out, he actually made pretty good, catchy rock and roll music. As the image and the craziness and his unfortunate uh, disorders took over, uh, it became a different thing. I see so many people discuss uh, uh, what's punk. You know, it's a big thing, and so my answer has always been: for me, punk is a way of life. It's not a haircut. It's not a leather jacket. It's 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 non-conforming. It's doing what you feel, and uh, and there is a style of punk that I grew up on that doesn't necessarily transcend. Every generation is allowed to have their own punk. At, at this point in my life, I see certain bands, and I go, "It's not for me," but it's certainly for a lot of people. And also, punk. Some people got mad when Green Day came out. That's not punk music. I, I thought it was great. I thought that yeah. they go, oh, he made a ballad. That's the most punk rock thing you could ever do, that he didn't conform. You know, he still, he did a concert where he said, I get in trouble when I talk politics, but he said, if you voted for Donald Trump, get the fuck out. That takes guts to be that 
famous mm -hmm. and say, I don't really care if half of my audience doesn't um, like it. I grew up on the Ramones. So do I think the Ramones is the beginning of punk? I do, because the drum technique didn't exist. The, their, their drummer didn't even know how to play the drums. He created mm -hmm. this technique with the wrist and, uh, and all the downstroking. And, uh, you know, there wasn't bands down picking, I should say, who were doing this. And so well, some people hear the Ramones and they go, well, that's not as heavy as the Sex Pistols. And that's not as heavy as Gigi. And that's not. But it wasn't about punk to me. It wasn't about how heavy it was. It was this mm. idea. And I, I like my music fast, but I like, mm. uh, I like some attitude. So my favorite punk bands would be the Ramones, would be Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers. I love the Misfits. The Misfits could be like pop music if the devil and a horror movie got mixed up in it. But it's so great to see uh, your generation and all these other people put out punk. Also, being in a punk band would be saying, I'm the best band in the world, you know, yeah. or I'm the worst band in the world. It, go, it, it goes with it. And to me, to me, punk is an attitude. End of story. It's an attitude. And to me, Punk is the Sex Pistols. And when you listen to that, one album, thrashed it through, great marketing, told everyone to fuck off, took the money mm -hmm. and left. That's it. That's punk rock. It makes, me, it, makes left, me sometimes, it makes me sometimes think, I want you guys to put out my record. And then I always go, well, we should record new music for it. And there's a part of me that goes, boy, it would be much cooler if we just put out the one record. And That's and what then, the kids are going to do. They're only going to ever do one record. Yeah, well, because we never we, – we've – recorded an album so many times we've just always scrapped it and it's been and because the band's been along like it's only we've been around for nearly 10 years and it's only now that we're starting to sell out our own home our own hometown because well now we're all of age and all the kids like that have been listening to us uh are all of age and then those kids are talking to those kids so every time we do a gig all of our like you know um usuals will come will come in but then um all of our usual people who will come to see us will come in, but they told other people and those people told other people. So that's, I mean, that's how fucking, you know, gigs and fan bases work. And it's, and, you know, and now we're at the point and we're like, well, you know what? We don't want to, we don't care if we keep that up or not. We'll play a gig when we want, when we feel like it. And I, my plan for the kids, cause I'm launching a solo career this year and that's going to be my main priority above everything. And my solo stuff is more, uh is more weezer i got a weezer tattoo as well it's more it's it's a bit more weezer but like it's a bit more of a pop punky weezer but with really fuzzed out guitars that come kind of, that kind of fall along the lines of like a like stone or of gold uh it's a fucking concoction but i want to uh grab all the anger and rejection from how we have felt for the past near decade as a band and just like all of that stemmed and just put it to one album and just do a double album, just do a 30 song <laughs> album, right? Release it. Just a, yeah, no, no, we're just going to call it like, we'll call it something stupid. Like, like we always, we have, we have the hashtag, the kids motherfuckers. And that's our handle on Instagram. They yeah, unplugging the Instagram, the kids motherfuckers. And I think I just might call it the kids motherfuckers. Like just something, just something stupid, something silly. And then just like, uh, like Dick it. Von Rock, <laughs> Dick Von Rock, boom, Dick there Von we go. Rock. Yeah, <laughs> let's segue away from the kids because I'm sick to fucking death of hearing about the kids. You're the one brought it up, my phone. Jazz, jazz, jazz. If you, yes. if you could, if you, because people want to hear this from you, one band, Desert Island. Who is it? Oh, one band. Well, you put her on the spot. Lee Zeppelin. <laughs> Uh, I'm on, Dad. So One hard, band. So hard. Um, can I give two answers? Sure. Yes. I think you could give a couple. Why not? Okay. If it was um a modern day Get band, right, Dad. Uh, I don't even think you guys will know who this is. But my favorite current Australian band is um, Hiatus Coyote, um, which are like a jazz neo like funk band, um, and like has influenced me quite significantly as a singer. Um, and it's definitely changed. Um, I used to study music before I started working for Golden Robot and I wanted to delve more into that specific genre. And I know it has not really any business being around Golden Robot. It's a very, very niche genre. But, um, yeah, that's probably the band I'd pick from, like, a modern-day perspective. Um, if it was going to be 
um, like an older band. I'd probably say Alice in Chains because that's what I grew up on. It's my dad's influence on me. Um, I don't think I could go without listening to them for like more than a few weeks. It's um, constantly have their discography on repeat. Um, but yeah, like I'd probably say those two, which are completely different bands. I know it's a bit weird. <laughs> No, but it's good to be uh, versatile. I saw Alice in Chains in New York City. First time they were opening for a band called Extreme, you know, which is a famous, you know, metal band. And no one knew who Alice in Chains were. And then they were appearing on this thing called ABC In Concert Live. Alice in Chains went on first. This is the original lineup with both the guys who passed, uh, uh, Mike Starr and, and uh, Lane Stanley. And anyway, the bill was a rap band called uh, Third Base. It was two white guys. And then uh, Fishbone and LL Cool oh, yeah. J. It was the right. hottest thing. Love that. And no one really knew it. We were seeing history. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I say that we had a, five meetings today and we were talking about tours. And the bands that go out and just have the three or four same bands sounding the same is awful. I love the idea of switching stuff up. So, Jason, I think that's starting to happen more. Jazz, you're going to have a hard time promoting your own music because Jagger, he's got the, uh, catchphrases and uh, hashtags, and uh, uh, he's, he's got it all. You're going to have to work. Uh, now, do you, Jazz, do you have a band now or are you working on music? Um, I don't have a band at the moment. Um, I was working on music when I was studying, but um, working for Golden Rover is a full time job now. So, I've actually put um my creativity for songwriting on hold for a while until i like um am comfortable to go back to songwriting um because i love working for golden robot it's um the start of my career which is awesome um but yeah i am a songwriter i play piano i'm a singer i used to teach singing um and uh i definitely want to go back to it eventually but yeah for now um it's on hold well, 400 artists uh, for all of you guys, it's, it's a full-time job. Um, it's, it's certainly going to take up time. And then uh, all the other things that you do, I mean, it's not as easy as you just put a record out. You know, if this no. was 40 years ago, you put out a record and a cassette or whatever, and, and you move on. But now um, all the different platforms that you guys have spoke about and then getting out and, and pushing it. And so uh, I, I'm really excited to be working with you guys and to see what we get I get people all the time that I, I just can't understand how they didn't make it. I think we all can say that. We've been places, we've heard music, and we go, why isn't this bigger? And it's because they didn't make that right connection. And sometimes you have someone handle your career who gives you all the wrong advice, or you trust somebody and it goes completely the wrong way. And so when you can get involved with people who are passionate about your music, um, maybe we'll get to give somebody a really good chance. So next week, the link will go live. We're going to premiere it right here on the show. If you have music, you can submit it, and uh, um, you'll submit some pictures, a little bio information. Lost Jagger. Um, he probably did not have the world's greatest uh, cell phone charger, but, uh, but I'm, I'm sure he'll be back. But anyway, um, and so we will get that out. You'll have two months. Each week, we are going to introduce uh, one of the judges and people who are uh, going to help um, to go through the process because obviously there'll be a lot of um, submissions. When we get down to 10 in two months, the final 10 will be here on the show. We'll listen to their songs. I think we should let the audience, maybe we put a little poll up and let them pick, you yeah. know, uh, pick who they enjoy as well. It'd be great to see them, uh, to see what the audience likes. And then um, and somebody will, will have a, a single out, uh, which is... is uh, so exciting and I, I think who knows and like you like you said a little earlier out of the 10 if you ever watch American Idol or any of these uh, shows uh, um, again here I am in America thinking that my shows are better than your shows but uh, no they they the runner-up is always the successful one the one yeah. who didn't win is usually the one who becomes the big star yeah 100 percent. And, and I think that you know we might do a compilation album if the top 10 are great we could put something out on digital and who knows, maybe we'll do it every year. Maybe every time you hit a milestone, we'll do it. But look, we're really excited to work with you. Um, um, I'm really, I'm loving your um, viewers, listeners. Um, you've got a great audience. We're happy to be involved. Thank you for having us on today. Um, 
Jagger had a ball. He just texted me. I think he's he's um uh, he ran out of juice. Um, thanks for having Jazz on. And you know, as I come on, I can I can bring on um uh you know different staff members who have different opinions and different things. And um, Jazz will be a, a constant because she's involved in the back end of this competition. But thanks for having us on, um, Jason. Thanks to the audience for listening to us. And um, I want to get back on soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark. And yeah, and this will become a, a regular feature today. I think we're introducing the audience to everyone and to the label a little bit. But as yeah. we go, we'll start to have appearances from some of the artists on there. I'm, Absolutely. I'm learning like everybody. I, I get the releases and I start to go through the music. And uh, I have a lot of the artists on my show, but I'd like to have some of the newer ones too. So that will uh, that will continue. And yeah, I think the audience was pretty good today. We have a few boneheads who've never seen a young woman before. That happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, some some of my audience sits in their house and they watch too much uh, uh, Wasp, you know, and they don't yeah. know how to behave. But uh, most of them uh, 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 seem to be pretty good. So I will let you guys run. I'm going to sit here and, and answer a few more uh, 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 questions. They're going to ask me when Warren D. Martini is coming on, uh, and it's going to be a while. So I thank you guys so much. Next thank week, you. the link goes live, and we will all be here to update you as as the yeah. process goes. Thank you, guys. 100%. Thanks, Jason. And thanks yeah. to your audience, too. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank okay. Much. See you, buddy. Bye. Okay. So that's uh, that was Mark and Jazz. I'm hoping that you guys uh, enjoyed seeing a different perspective. And and uh, and I know that people are watching from all over the world. So, uh, you know, you, you realize that there's much more music than what we know. I know we talk a lot about the uh, um, the classic kind of rock and metal on this show. Uh, if that be, only happened because those are the people I knew, um, people that I had worked with uh, is why the show came about. It gave me the opportunity. Opportunity. So, okay. So if you guys want to talk about anything, I am up to talk about it. I will say uh, on the punk thing, a few people were commenting about uh, influences in the drums and the Ramones. So uh, Mar yes, Mark Bell was in the band Dust, uh, but Marky Ramone is not the original drummer for the Ramones. Tommy Ramone, Ramone was, and he was not a drummer. Um, and so if you watch my interview with Monty Millman, tournament for the Ramones, um, he explains it. And, uh, and so he created the style of drums that every punk band then later did. The Stooges did not have that drum stuff. Yes, the Stooges was punk, uh, but what is now considered mainstream worldwide punk, it wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the Ramones. Uh, the Ramones also had amazing harmonies and and, and uh, there's some songs sound like the Beach Boys and the next, next song would be about copping dope or, or uh, turning tricks at 53rd and 3rd. Um, there was some pretty crazy stuff. If you haven't heard uh, Ramon's music, it's never too late to get into it. They certainly left uh, an incredible, incredible catalog, and there's much more than uh, I won't be sedated. I can assure you that. Uh, Joe, thank you so much. I'm glad you tuned in. Sometimes people don't watch the different interviews, um, and I, I like when people give it a shot. One of the great things about this audience uh, is that you, uh, you're you open-minded to watch different things. Um, when I would listen to Howard Stern, He'd have somebody on the show. I'd say, I'm not really a fan, but I will listen to it to see how he interviews them. And at the end of the interview, I became a fan as well. Uh, Vinny Apice interview is out there right now. And uh, I like that. Uh, uh, yes. I, I, you know, it's funny, Groovy. Uh, a lot of people think that Chris is Phil Lewis. That is the theory that we've heard. I think that he writes too well. Um, to be Phil Lewis, but he, yes, Chris is, he's, he's excited. Um, uh, the Apathy interview is out there right now. And um, uh, I recommend you watch it if you haven't seen it. He is, a, he is one of my favorite drummers of all time, without a doubt. Um, I, I, he came to be a guest with Sin City Sinners here in Vegas. I knew he was good. I got to watch him this close to me. Boy, did he hit those drums. And, uh, and he's great. Yeah, I really, uh, I, I'm a fan. I was glad to have him on the show. He's also a really nice guy. And he told great stories. For those of you who didn't see it yet, the story about uh, his mother making lasagna for John Lennon and maybe Yoko Ono stealing the uh, pan, who knows? Uh, it was incredible. But then also he, talking about giving Tony Iommi his first devil dog. If you're from the East Coast, you know a company called Drake's. 
they made ding dongs and ring dings and uh the devil dog devil dogs two pieces of devil's food cake with a white cream in the middle and it tastes like uh, uh like a chocolate Twinkie or something. It's hard to explain, but it's very rich. And he explained that Tony Omi needed a glass of milk, obviously. Anyway, of all things, the devil dog for the singer, uh, for the guitar player, Black Sabbath, the guy who invented heavy metal guitar for the most part. I'm sure we can argue about that too, but I kind of believe that's where it started. Uh, anyway, it's a great, it's a great uh, interview. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. And, uh, yeah, Paul Black, that's an exclusive I haven't really told anyone. I had to postpone it because I'm going to be um, in Los Angeles. I'm on the road for the next couple of weeks with Stephen Pearson. But uh, uh, Paul Black will tell us about the history of LA Guns. He wrote half the album. He was in LA Guns uh, before Phyllis was the singer. And uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Are you able to listen to your own music for pleasure? That's a great question, uh, Indy Paul. You know, yes, I like my own music. Uh, the only problem is I've been in, I, I've, I've been an actor. I've been in, I've worked on film. I've always had a hard time looking at myself uh, and hearing myself. Now I do this all the time. I sit in my living room and I'm talking to people constantly. I had it on a big screen next to me. And I've had to realize that uh, you have to have a thick skin to do this. People are jerks. It's okay. Um, this is how I look. What can I do? Uh, uh, I've got a very beautiful domestic partner. Um, but uh, um, as far as my own music goes, yeah, you know, you, the, the, this, I like writing songs. So songs that I wrote, I enjoy. And, uh, you do always wonder, I could have done that differently. I think every musician would go, I should have changed that. I should have fixed this. When our record came out, Sin City Rejects, Death of a Nation, we played it, uh, you know, in every system possible and blasted it. And we did the car test where you put the CD in the car. This is the thing that every band does. And, uh, and I really enjoyed it. And I don't, hate that record. I think it's a little juvenile. I wrote some angry songs. I kind of sometimes wish uh, maybe I went in a different direction. I wrote different music for the Sin City Sinners than I wrote for the Sin City Rejects. Uh, and I have a bunch of other songs for, for other projects, and I'm trying to figure out what I would do next musically. The deal on Sin City uh, Rejects is the record is playing a little bit in streaming. We're going to shut it all down. I have a few signed CDs that I sell uh, on my whatnot uh, link. And other than that, um, it will be down. And then later this year, it will be available from Golden Robot Records on vinyl. And so, uh, and, and, and I hope you like it. I think it's a fun record. Now, let me see what's going on here. Um, okay. Thank you, uh, Sharon, saying goodnight from Michigan. I appreciate you watching. The next Hot Sauce show, I'm hoping, will be... Next Wednesday, Miguel and I are trying to get the Michael Anthony one together. It may be taped because next Wednesday I am going to be in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania with Stephen Piercy. And I want you guys to know that I am also going to uh, eventually release all of my Stephen Piercy tour diaries. I'm editing them. It takes time. I promise you this trip to Los Angeles is going to be so ridiculous. I can't tell you where we're staying, but when you see it, it's nuts. The show is going to be nuts. Um, and so that is coming uh, very soon. And my Patreons, because they are loyal and support my channel. And um, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to send, I'm going to let them see everything um, first. Okay. Uh, but we need to have Johnny come back and talk about sticks. I spoke to him this morning and Johnny will be here at least once a month, maybe more. And I'm going to be seeing him in Los Angeles. Um, uh, and, and he did tell me he had a great time at sticks, but he, Johnny's very critical, uh, you know, the way he explains things. Uh, so Johnny Monaco will be back uh, next week. Um, Simon Wright, also a great drummer and a great uh, person. I'm trying to just get to everything and I'll let you guys go. Uh, yeah, uh, Nick is saying it too. Uh, it's very hard not to think about what you can do different. On a song of mine called... I just want to wait some time with you, which is where the name of the show came from. There's a part after the solo where there is a bad note that went into that went into the uh, song, and I love it. It just boom. And I'll be honest with you, uh, uh, this is the first time I really sit down and play in a, in a studio and play time and all these things. Uh, uh, 
And uh, I, I wanted all my mistakes in there and I would do things because I was like, oh, I'm not going to let anyone um, re-record my bass parts when I'm not there. And so there's a lot of little things that only I uh, would do. And that's kind of part of the punk rock of it. So those mistakes that are on there, they were intentional and I don't mind. Uh, uh, I'm coming to Illinois. It's not necessarily Chicago. I'm, it's not uh, The date's not released yet. But I, that won't stop me from spilling it. Uh, hold on. It's not for a while. September. You got some time. September. Uh, let's say, uh, uh, what do we got here? Just trying to make sure we get uh, we get everybody. Uh, and anyway, and I'm glad that you guys. Uh, uh, got to hear all that. And I hope somebody is going to win uh, a record deal because what a great, uh, what a great opportunity. It's not, uh, uh, not bullshit. It's not, uh, you know, I mean, of course we're, we're, we're golden robots. It's getting promotion out of it. And so is my channel, but listen, someone's going to get a record deal. Uh, thank you so much in the uh, call. So that would be a business thing that both sides are, uh, aware of i don't i can't say where it goes uh that i, you know, I can only bring the, the 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 horses to water water i really hate how i say uh water um it's from new york but uh, uh he had listen johnny has a record call she said she found her soulmate he needs to finish it i scolded him this morning uh and uh and he has a back catalog as well so hopefully those guys can make a deal so Janet Torturers are lunatics. I grew up on lunatics. I grew up in New York City. I've seen the lunatics. I saw a bill with the lunatics. This is crazy. It was at a place called Jones Beach. It's a beach. And um, um, and so, uh, sorry, I start to think about too many things at one time and I just nod out. The bill was the lunatics, Weezer, and no doubt, no doubt was on the Tragic Kingdom tour. How insane. Is that so? It's always little chicks for me. Well, gen torturers, I think, were hotter. Mm. So, listening and whacking are two different things. Um, anyway, so uh, I'm trying to wrap everything up. Uh, I got some cool people coming up. There are some people coming on the show that will surprise you. Uh, some that will surprise me, and uh, where where I'm constantly going back and forth with people. Uh, Cher Ross from Vixen was supposed to be on the show, and she just uh, announced uh, yesterday in Florida at the Monsters Rock Cruise that she is leaving Vixen for some time. I hope she'll come on and clarify it. Um, we shall see. Uh, I see someone asking about a Mickey Dolan's interview. I would love to do that. My, I got to get these subscribers up. Uh, Blackie Lawless is... He did the Eddie Trunk interview and everyone else was put on hold. I think closer to the American tour, I'm told that that interview will happen. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, uh, please, though, if there's anyone watching who hasn't subscribed, I can't imagine there would be anybody um, that has it. But uh, go on and hit subscribe. Like this video, all that stuff. But subscribe. And again, um, uh, it helps. We got to get to the 10,000 so we can do the, the, do this record promotion. And I want you guys to be involved. You see Mark is up for anything. Uh, and, uh, and his modest son, uh, Jagger, uh, they, they, they're a lot of fun and, and, um, and jazz also, uh, and joined us, uh, who works in the, uh, music department there and, uh, and does so much and really helps, um, with the promotions and, and this promotion as well, really getting it, um, Organized. Yeah, here's one I really love. I've, and I reached out to this uh, gentleman. His name is Eddie Martinez. He played all the guitar in uh, Run DMC. Uh, he played with David Ruffles. But uh, he's the king of rock. I mean, I'd love to have him on. And I'm trying it. Uh, yeah, Steve Whiteman, you're welcome. That's a fun one. That record sold out during my interview. Sometimes people don't get the power of this channel. They think, oh, this other guy's been doing these podcasts for 20 years. He, he must be doesn't mean anything. You guys are the audience. You're the passionate ones. You're the ones who buy the product. This isn't about me. I don't have to sit here and talk to an inanimate object all day. You guys support the music. 
you guys uh, are, are the reason that all of this happens and the reason why our, our numbers are higher than everybody else. You know, I, it's okay to brag sometimes. There are people who have done these shows and that doesn't mean they're bad. But they're not hitting 10,000 subscribers and they've been doing it for 10 years. We're just over a year. Um, and, I, and like I said, I'm grateful. And I don't talk to you guys like idiots. Uh, yeah, Tiffany was a good one, right? I like these interviews. I like to have more people on besides, you know, hard rock and heavy metal. We got to mix it up. And Tiffany's great. She's a really cool uh, chick. If you can say that nowadays, I saw somebody, uh, I saw somebody earlier saying uh, uh, that it was cringeworthy or something where I talked about maybe uh, complimenting jazz on something. And I'm thinking, in a P or maybe I was saying something PC and you, you, some of the dopes out there don't realize that it's a joke. If you, if you haven't watched the show, you realize it's not the most PC show in the world. Um, I'd love to have Donny V on again. Donny V is hard to get a hold of. He was hard to get a hold of the first time. It'd be hard to get a hold of again. Um, because I'd love to have him and Johnny Monaco on the same show. Uh, but who knows? I would love to have Johnny Monaco and uh, uh, Chips Enough and uh, Monaco on the same show. Tony, thank you so much. Yeah, but a lot of people t t got turned on to the channel. From watching um, the Lost Lives interview, you know that was a big turning point. Um, but uh, anyway, it's almost time for me to wrap up. Jason, I like this one though. Some of the best interviews are people that you don't know. Bridget West, I recommend you tune in. It's coming out next week or so. You might not know her. You Google her. Um, She's hot. But besides that, she has an amazing story to tell. And I feel the same way. I like uh, my goal is to try to bring you some uh, some people that maybe you haven't heard about. Listen, everyone's competing for the same uh, interviews, you know, uh, and, and, and and, you know, it's a little ridiculous. I try to I don't interview just anybody. Trust me, there is a lot of turning down. That happens too. Uh, I have to feel like I can tell uh, the story and that the, the audience that you guys would want to hear the story. Uh, I thought this guy was good too. No one really, that one was G. Tom Mack. Uh, not a lot of people watch that one. I hate when there's no one else here because then I'm the only one talking and I, I take a drink and I forget that you guys can't carry the conversation while I'm gone. Um, so I'd like to have Dick Von Rock on, which is Eric Turner's new band. Uh, um, but who knows? Anyway, there's, there's so much going on. I, I'm, I have been juggling my technology. I still need a new laptop. The fund hasn't worked. And, uh, 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 but I'm working to better this show and, uh, Back to the Wheel of Names. Some of my older subscribers know about the Wheel of Names, and we're going to go back to that. We're going to go back to giveaways. I'm glad that this this that we held up today. I didn't think this was going to make it, and we had uh, four we had four people on at the same time. How crazy is that? Would love to have uh, her on the show, Concrete Blonde. You know, sometimes people go and they look at who who's been on, and they see these. Uh, metal people and then they think well that doesn't fit my audience and that's why i'm trying to show people uh something uh different uh, well chris uh, uh you know he could be a good interview i mean he is a a loyal worshiper uh to one of the la guns the one with the wigs um and he he's a little bit of a, a troll right i mean i'm not trying to talk out of school uh, but uh, but that's okay. I love you all. Although some of you were out of line when uh, Young Jazz was on. Some of you guys were creeps, douchebags. You know who you are. Yeah, there's a thank you. There's an interesting one, Donnie Dunnigan. I was so honored to talk to that guy. That one I lost sleep over. I was more excited about Donnie Dunnigan than half these rock and roll guys. But uh, anyway, uh, but. Uh, 
Chris is uh, saying that uh, none of that is true, but we all know. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> and then of course the wait, hold on. The good doctor always has uh, some some advice. I think we need to have Roxy, the drummer from Vixen, on because somebody's got some explaining to do. She is now the only member of Vixen. They went when I interviewed Janet Gardner. They had three. The original guitar player had passed. Now they're down to one. So we will have to see. Uh, anyway, guys, I could sit here and shoot the shit with you all day and all night, but I've got some work to do, and then I'm on my way to Los Angeles, California. If anybody's there. Come over and uh, say hello. Stephen Piercy. After that, I'm in Pennsylvania. Then after that, I'll be in um, uh, Connecticut. So you guys should, uh, if you're in that area. If not, I'll be at the M3 Festival this year. They should be giving me a little money, the M3 Festival. They, they should. I should be hosting, right? If anyone's watching from the uh, M3 uh, channel thing, whatever they call that, festival you guys should should realize i'm going to be there anyway so why would you give money to like a, a, a bunch of jackasses when i'm your jackass buffalo new york coming up syracuse new york coming up oh the rainbow back door backyard bash coming up massachusetts listen i'm gonna be everywhere i i, I can't I can't even get into it all. How many places I'm going to be? All right, I appreciate everyone. By the way, you guys are asking for different guests today. I'll give you that. I, did it. I should have. Uh, uh, uh. So Jazz is a singer songwriter. Her dad is in a band. Uh, Jazz hasn't recorded her music yet, from what I understood. Uh, but her father has a is in a band on Golden Robot. The name escapes me. I'll try to list all of that. Uh, yeah, Lee Aaron would be. Uh, Lee Aaron would be good. Uh, Connecticut is uh, uh, next week. <laughs> Guys, follow me on Instagram, by the way. I'm told that that's important. I'm told that uh, I need more followers, that if I'm going to be an influencer, I dread that word, uh, uh, I need followers on Instagram. Sin City Collector can share my Instagram. It's uh, J-S-I-N uh, underscore green. Like the color, there's no E on the end of green. Come on, Bitsy. My cat is trying to tell me oh, that it's just about dinner time. And uh, she does not like when I talk too long on, on here. She gets most of my attention. That's Bitsy, right, Bitsy? You can say hello to everybody. Okay. So, yeah, she's saying that it's dinner time. So, uh, please go and follow my uh, Instagram so that I can be the most successful influencer and cat can have some kibble, right? Yeah, uh, she reminds me of a, a Grogu lately with her ears kind of hanging down. If anyone didn't watch the last Boba Fett episode, I don't want to offer any spoilers, but boy, is that good. Book of Boba Fett, last episode, premieres today, premiered today. I watched it. And... Uh, I had to watch it fast because these jackasses spoil things. Um, but anyway, yeah, go to that Instagram. Hold on. Yeah, I know. I know. But see, do you want, I got to tell the people about Instagram. You want to tell them? All right. Dinner's coming. Don't you worry. Uh, anyway, go to my Instagram. Follow it. It's exciting. It's so, listen, they already heard from you. They're, what? Okay. They, uh, anyway, go to my Instagram. <laughs> I know you're a talking cat and, uh, go follow my, my, uh, my Instagram. All right. Anyway, I, I've had fun. I could chat all night. Remember that this was brought to you by golden robot records. Go visit goldenrobotrecords.com. Listen to all the brand new music and, uh, uh I'm broadcasting here. And uh, join me. This is very unprofessional, busy. <laughs> join me next uh, Wednesday. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate all your support. Let's get ten thousand, and let's uh, let's all together give somebody a record deal, and then uh, we will be on the ground floor uh, with a great new artist. Thank you so much, and good night.